What is up guys? We are filming another video while filming three other videos. So we are doing a wideband install. I didn't even know I needed this until my tuner was like, hey, you need one. So I got one. It's the AEM inline wideband controller or whatever. It's a universal one. I'm out. I modified it to be able to work with the access port and to make this fully plug and play. And essentially you have to wire everything manually and that's fine. You could just, you know, you can cut your wires, you can tee into it, you can splice into it, you can do all these things, but I didn't want to do that. My entire thing with this build is keeping it clean and everything plug and play. I don't like the idea of splicing if there's a harness or a connector or something I can get to make it work, I would rather do it. I've spent a lot of the money in this car and I don't want to just start splicing wires if I don't have to. So basically what I did was remove my rear O2 sensor, I depinned it, I had another connector that I basically depinned and cut up and soldered to the wideband and made it work. Now I do have the proper connector and new pins coming in so I can make everything nice and legit. But for right now, I just need to get this stuff working. And if it works, I'm happy. So this is your wideband. It basically comes in this box. Uh, I already did the modifications. Honestly, it's just a bunch of stuff. So this is like your sensor. Cool. This goes into your downpipe. Put that to the side with the mite junk. And this is the rest of it. This is like your controller and stuff. And essentially to make this plug and play is basically made this hacked up looking thing to a rear O2 sensor. And if this works, I'm gonna make it nice and clean. But for now, you know, if I can get by, I can get by. And that's just the chassis ground. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I made this right now. So today we're taking our AEM Y band and we're basically gonna make it plug and play. Iwire sells a kit for this and it's a great kit plug and play it looks easy enough So I'm gonna try to make my own so basically it's just like a universal uh, AEM wideband With a bunch of wires I'm gonna see if I can make my own by stealing pins from this and then stealing this connector from our rear O2 sensor and Make it plug and play. I actually have the same connector coming in the mail it's just not going to be here in time because Cobb is doing this thing right now where if I don't get the car tuned as soon as possible, I, I'm going to be screwed. So later on, I'm going to go through and probably swap out the connectors and make everything good. I'm going to go through, depin this, uh, and then hopefully we could reuse this connector. And then this rural 2 sensor will still be good in the future if we need it. Then I'm also hoping I could take the pins out of this and then put them onto these and then hopefully this all works. I, you know, I don't really know. I'm kind of winging this, so... I guess we'll start pulling this all apart. It shouldn't be too bad. I don't know if you guys can even really see this, but, but I guess let's start. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to solder onto the ends of these. Um, I, I just can't really, you know, I can't, I don't know if you can see that. I can't really split those open to get new wire in there. So I think I'm just going to end up soldering on the back of these. That's fine. We'll just strip them back, solder them together. And then when I get the actual connector in, we can actually go through, make everything perfect and call that a day. Uh, let's get this all dealt with. So the sensor can go to the side. We don't need it right now. And to be honest, I don't even know if this is gonna work. <laughs> I'll be straight up with you guys. I have no idea if this is gonna work. So I believe your ground is just gonna go to your chassis and then these three are gonna go to your connector. So we're gonna solder on these pins to here. Strip it back, solder it on. Pin it into here and then we will test it and see if it works. And if it does work, I'll go ahead and clean all this up. But I, I don't wanna make everything nice and perfect until I know it's going to work. So. For now, we're just gonna keep it kind of messy looking because again, I don't wanna throw everything in and then find out it ain't gonna work. So let's go ahead, solder this on and we can go ahead and throw these all back in and test it hopefully. Uh, <laughs> I hope it works. I really do hope it works, but let's go ahead and start getting some of this stuff done.
Okay guys, this is kind of like our final product. This is our chassis ground. So right now I already have a connector on order and I have new pins on order so I can get rid of all this and properly do all this and make it nice and clean. And, and um, eventually I wanna have all this like sheafed off and nice and clean, but right now it is what it is. So this is kind of the idea. It only uses three pins based off the iWire one. If this doesn't work, I'm going to go based off of what my tuner said. Um, so I'm gonna give this a shot and we'll see. So I will see you guys back at the car and we'll plug all this in and, and see if this works. I am gonna put some electrical tape on these just so I don't short these out on anything. The last thing I wanna do is damage this unit. It's not cheap. So I'm gonna clean up this and cover this electrical tape and then we'll see you guys at the car and, we were gonna, and we're gonna test this and make sure it works. So let's hope. So now that you guys know how to make this, uh, let's just throw it in the car and actually see if it works. After we do this, we're gonna have to throw in our tune from your tuner. So you're gonna need a bass tune for this. And hopefully the EPA doesn't find us. <laughs> and, but this is your sensor, this is your wideband sensor. Go ahead and take the cap off. There's some sealant on it already. I should figure out what this size is before I screw myself. Okay, it's a 22. I don't know how I'm gonna tighten it, but <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure that out. Uh, essentially, it goes in here, because I don't have an O2 sensor socket for that size. So this is gonna be interesting. I'm probably gonna have to use an adjustable. Okay, well, that's probably as tight as I'm gonna get it. It's pretty tight. Honestly, before I rattle this, I just wanna make sure it works. So I'm gonna hook everything up, make sure it works, and if it does, we're mint. So to get power, you can get it from this clip right here. <sighs> right there. I'm just gonna throw all this in so we can test. Should just go in right here like so which it does and then we're gonna ground off the chassis I don't know if you guys can see it we're gonna ground off of that so there's my ground with the original ground there let's go ahead and get it thrown in and again this is all temporary this is just so I know everything works this is our connection with our wide band in. And now we gotta throw our tune in so the car knows what to see. All right guys, so inside the car, the access port is connected to my computer. I have Wi-Fi turned off just cause I'm sketched out with everything going on right now with the EPA. And if you're wondering, my webcam is covered so the EPA can't see me doing bad tuning. Uh, <laughs> let's launch the uh, access port manager. We're in offline mode, okay. So that's all of our current tunes. And if I open my revision, I should be able to just take this and drop it in. Yes. And if I scroll, there is my tune right there. So I should be able to eject the access port. We can close this, disconnect our computer and the access port should have our tune. We should be able to go to our tune, uh, change ECU map. Right now I have an OTS map on. Uh, we have to actually make sure the car is on. Uh, ECU reflash. Uh, then we got to select our tune. Where are you? That's my tune right there. That's for my tuner. So this is the base map. Okay, continue. And let the access port do what it needs to do. I'll come back once our new tune has been installed. Okay, it's all finished up just to confirm we can come to tune uh show current map and there you go that's my current map right there next we got to change our data log parameters this is the things we want to watch while we do our data loggings so to set our data log parameters we have to go to the gauges the car has to be on to do this uh if we go to setup configure data logging 
And now we gotta set these to whatever our tuner wants. Every tuner will be different, so just make sure these are the same as your tuner. I'm going through my list and I am setting the parameters my tuner wants. So we gotta make sure this one is selected. We are gonna be using this for a wide band instead of our Rero 2 sensors to so make sure this one's selected. Uh, and again, just follow whatever parameters your tuner wants. Once it's done, you can save it by hitting the back button. And one thing I wanna see is I wanna see if we are reading our wideband. So basically, you just highlight the gauge you wanna change uh, just by scrolling through. This was boost originally, I just selected it and then I went to sense only rear 02. It appears that it is working. Now if we look at the engine bay, the light should be green. And if we come, it's green so it looks like it's working. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, clean all this up and I'll be back. There you guys go, that's the final look. I just kind of ran the sensor up and behind the AOS, so if in the future we need to swap out the sensor, it's very easy, just the connection right there. Ran the controller to right here, status is green, so we're still okay. And then I just took the bundle of wires and stuck it behind here. Later on, when I have the proper connector for right here, I'm going to shorten all of this and tidy it all up. Um, and eventually, there is a loose connector now right here. I would like to remove this in a future day, but right now I'm not worried about it. So we're just going to let it be for now. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is a fully plug and play DIY wideband sensor kit. So there you go, guys. My hair is just not it today. I'm like crazy. I'm going nuts right now trying to get this car running because I have literally no time. But that's it, guys. I hope this video helped you guys out if you plan on doing this in the future to your car. So if anyone still does this anymore i don't know but yeah that's it if you enjoyed the video please feel free to leave a like comment and subscribe as always take it easy